Last year, I shared my 10 goalie hacks that I thought every goalie needed to know. And today, I want to share 10 more with you from how to skate, how to warm up properly, to style tips, how to become more consistent. These are my 10 absolutely must-know goalie hacks. Let's begin. So I get this question all the time. Trav, I'm a new goalie. I'm just beginning. What are some tips to work on? Or I've been stuck forever at a certain level. How do I get to the next level? How do I get better? And the answer I always give is working on your skating. Now, you hear internet goalie coaches and coaches in the media talk all the time about become a great skater. Great skating is an essential foundation. This guy is such a great skater. Well, what does that even mean? To me, it means making the foundation of my game my strongest asset. Think about this for a second. Everybody wants to think about and talk about making saves, the big saves. You talk about the big love save, the big stick save, but that's a split second clip that was a result of multiple moves that led to the goalie being in that position to make the save. But the ideal goaltending is when you're in position, great shuffles, great tee pushes, amazing butterfly slides amongst many, many more tools in the toolbox. This is something that I'm working on every single day. Even right now today at 25 years old, this is my foundation. I'm always trying to get better at it. For example, shuffles, making sure my head is staying level. I'm not bouncing around in and out of my squat. I'm staying level. My hands are in front of me. They're not dropping to my knees, dropping to my pants. And I personally shuffle with a narrower stance because I find it's way easier to stay mobile, be able to move with narrower feet than if they get far apart. Think about being in a splits versus having your feet together. Much easier that way. Next up, T-pushes. Making sure my head is the first to rotate. Then my shoulders rotate. The rest of my body follows through on that movement. It's little details like this that when things get hectic, when it gets hard to stay composed, this is where it matters. If my head isn't going first, if I'm not square to the puck, I'm not on the proper angle. Now I have to move more to the next puck and I'm more likely to be out of position and resort to desperation. And a lot of this becomes being aware of where the shooters are and knowing what you need to do to become set in position for the next shot. If you're not following the basic foundation of movements, you're making your life way harder for the next shot and the next shot and the next shot gets harder after that. I'm not religious by any means, but I do believe that God helps them who help themselves. Staying square, staying ahead of the game is helping yourself. Now, as far as sliding goes, I'm sure we could talk lots about this, but I think the same concept, head first, shoulders go second, building a good, strong push, hands in front of the body with an engaged core is critical. There are many other details that are you know, kind of situational, but I'll leave my basic skating hacks at that. Sliding, getting the pad flat, driving through on the push leg, hands in front, activated core, and good rotations. Those are the keys to almost every single movement. Next up, hack number two, warming up properly. Now, I'm gonna start by saying I'm very lucky to be able to get a 20 minute warm up before every game because not everybody is. But here is how I would do things if I didn't have that perk. So for our practices, I always show up early. I try to do my mobility routine and my stretching routine. You can do this at home or at the rink. I usually start off by doing some wipers just to kind of open up the hips, kind of go back and forth. Some glute bridges, getting those legs activated. Clamshells, good for the groin. Some hamstring raises here. Now you're gonna to need to get one leg against the wall and one free, so it might be kind of a tricky spot to find. You can also try the world's greatest man stretch. This is really good for the hip flexor. And then I'll stretch my calves out with a band or you can use a towel here, whatever is available. Combine this with maybe a little bit of little cross ball rolling and stretching, you're gonna feel great. And it doesn't take a lot, a little goes a long way. I get on the ice, and normally I wouldn't take any shots for the first five or six minutes of warm-ups. Just stretching, getting the body feeling good. I always start off by doing some hip flexor stretches. A lot of people talk about goaltending in the sense that groin stretches are the be-all end-all, when in reality, your hip stretches, your hip flexors, all that stuff, especially on your back end, that is what is critical to staying loose in the mobile for goaltending. And if you wanna do a full splits, that's another video for another day. But after that, I'll do a little bit of hamstring stretches, more hip flexor stretches. Here I'm doing my pigeon pose. You can hold it halfway to get one sensation, and then you get into the full stretch for another sensation two different levels two different feelings on both of them but take it easy like don't don't force it give your body what it wants if you want to show everybody how sweet you are with you know showing your flexibility off two minutes of the warm-up's great you can do a full splits well you're gonna be looking really cool when you're injured again everybody wants to talk about having to do the splits you got to be this you got to be that stay healthy get the body warm avoid injuries you're gonna play a lot longer this is something i really wish i knew when i was younger Everything I do in my warm-up is with purpose and functionality, not to look cool on social media. And this right here is a quad stretch that I do against the bench. It is the one that I probably have that makes me feel the best, makes me feel the loosest. And if you only had one stretch to do, I would say do this one, but you want to do it towards the end when you're a little bit more warm and it feels great. It's great for the front of the calves, front of the legs, front of the quads. It's amazing. Next up, take some shots. Now, make your teammates want to help you with your warm-ups. Not all shooters are perfect, but if you treat them with some respect and you ask them to do your warm-up a certain way, nine times out of 10, they'll probably have no problem doing it. Throw a few pucks at the glove and blocker from your stance. I don't even close my glove most of the time, mostly because my glove is broken at the moment, but also if you can catch the puck without closing the glove, 
you can definitely catch it when you do close. It also helps if you're a kid, you can't close your glove properly, you learn to catch pucks Henrik Lundqvist style without closing the glove. Then after that, I'll drop my butterfly, gloves again, couple gloves, couple blocker saves, then I'll work the stick. Is it even possible to accomplish all this before the start of your practice or your game? Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but try a few things. See how it goes. It definitely won't hurt. Everybody does different things in the warmups. This is my recommendation and what works for me. Now, let's talk about nerves and confidence because I know this is something that I dealt with a lot when I was younger. Like when I played my first year of AA hockey at 13, I think every single game I played, the first shot of the game would always go in. Didn't matter if it was a dump in from center or a breakaway. I get so nervous, I couldn't even play. But here's a couple of tips that I think hopefully can help. Hockey at the end of the day is only a game. Everybody is stressed because they think they need to get their full NCAA Division I scholarship to Boston College when they're nine years old, or they're watching how good the world's best are and then they're concerned that, well, I'm not at that level. Well, it takes time and a lot of it. So take some deep breaths. Just breathe in through the nose. Hold it. Breathe out through the mouth. Just relax the shoulders, relax your jaw, drink some water, just close your eyes, become more situationally aware and immerse yourself in your environment. Life isn't over because you're letting one goal or 10 goals or even 10 soft goals and the sun will rise again tomorrow and you're gonna get more opportunities. Again, it's just a game. Don't invest everything in it. It's not the end of the world. I've had many bad games and I will have many more bad games to come, but I'm not worried about it. I'm focused on trying to have a good game for the next time that I'm skating. You have the ability to choose how you react to situations. You can choose to be upset. You can choose to be happy. You can choose to let it not bother you and move on. Now, let's talk about focus. I've always found growing up that as you go from playing you know, three 12-minute periods, three 15s and a 20, to three full 20-minute periods, it's hard to bring the focus that you need the whole game. I found that constantly making sure I'm hydrated and drinking water throughout the day helps. How do you know if you're hydrated? Well, look at the color of your pee. If it's yellow, you need some water. If it's super clear, you're good to play, but make sure you keep drinking some water. If you're not hydrated, you're gonna cramp, your muscles can't move the same way, and honestly, you can't think as clearly. I've also found for some extra clarity, drinking this Amino IQ has really helped me. Some guys love drinking pre-workout. That's always kind of giving me the itches and it's a little bit too much for me. Amino IQ here is a brain stimulator. It helps me stay hydrated. It promotes muscle recovery. And most importantly, it gets me more alert and focused with the nootropics in it to get my brain activated for the game. This may sound crazy, but I promise you this works. Plus the grape and the peach flavors are absolutely amazing. It's Canadian made. And if you want to pick up some too, you can do so at the link in the description. And I got a promo code TRAVSUCKS that'll get you 20% off these awesome Canadian made supplements. Now, this is a little bit touchy, but let's talk about puck handling for a second. Everybody sees clips of Mike Smith burying empty net goals and throwing bombs to the blue line for breakaway passes, and that's great. However, you're watching a highlight reel. The name of the game in hockey is allow less goals than the other team. If you do that, you win. If you win, you're gonna go places. Puck handling is all about puck possession. Is it boring? Absolutely. But if the other team does not have the puck, they can't score on you. You can't lose if the other team doesn't have the puck. Every single time I stop the puck, I'm thinking, how can we maintain possession? So for example, here are some clips. Stop the puck, leave it, let the defenseman take it. Stop it, leave it. Stop it, let him take it. Let the D-man take it. Are you noticing a theme here? It's about you not getting scored on. Here's a perfect example right here of how not to play the puck. I stop the puck, defense doesn't give me an option, I panic. What do I do? I throw a pizza right at the middle of the all-you-can-eat buffet, and now I just gave them a free goal. How do you fix it? Watch here. I call the defenseman. He doesn't give me an option. He doesn't seem like he wants the pucks. All right. Well, instead of throwing it at the middle, I'm going to put it off the yellow part of the board. Those are way more favorable bounces. Backhand. D-man's got it. We're out of the zone. Let's break out. And I've used that move a couple times this year to get myself out of trouble, and it works. Now, do not get lazy and relax on pucks. When you're puck handling, this is a bonus. This is an extracurricular on top of stopping the pucks. The last thing you want to do is go out to help your team and end up hurting them by allowing them to score. Watch right here. The puck bounce is kind of funny on me. I was relaxed. I wasn't prepared for it. And boom, they scored. Luckily, we still won the game, but I probably deserve to be benched for that because that was a brutal mistake. Puck handling should be simple. It shouldn't be a Chinese fire drill. Hack number six this is a little bit of a touchy topic. Now, reverse VH and reverse play. Again, this is a tool, not the whole toolbox itself. Moving from Canada to playing Sweden, I've noticed that a lot of guys, they basically use an RVH as their primary stance, which is you know different strokes, different folks, but this is night and day different from how I see the game. I'm 10 times more reactive, more responsive for my feet. If I have the option, sometimes you need to use a reverse, but I want to stay on my feet as much as I can. Maybe right here, the shooter's looking to bank it off me. Maybe he centers it. I have an active stick. I'm upright on the post. I'm tall with my toe box integrated on the post. Perfect textbook RVH right here, and I make the save. Here's another example. Player peels around the net. 
Everything's good. I got my toe box integration on the post with an active stick because he is stick length away from me. Problem is that he centers it right by my pad, goes through for the overtime winner. Now, in my opinion, this is an unacceptable goal because instead of blaming the D, I could have just intercepted the pass with my stick and made my life way easier. Or I make the read that he's gonna center it there and I use the glove trick that I showed in last year's goalie hacks videos. I flip my glove upside down against the ice, covering against my pad in collaboration with my stick against the ice. And now he can't center the puck, he can't bank it off me and I can intercept any option. Perfect, right? Well, yes. Only problem though now is all my weight is to my glove side and if a pass catches me by surprise, I gotta bring all my weight back to the other side. So again, the biggest takeaway here is that hockey and goaltending is a thinking man's game. It's a reaction game. It's not a math test. It's not a textbook. It's definitely not one size fits all. You have to be able to think and think fast. With that being said, goaltending is always changing. In the last five years, I've seen some of the biggest technological advancements to date. The one piece pad, the one piece skate, the cowlingless skates, the sticks that have cutouts. And in my opinion, the most revolutionary, toe ties. Every company has a toe tie that they sell in their pads these days. Brian's has the smart strap. Warrior has the ARS. Everybody has their own. Most of them will last you a month, maybe two months at tops, and then they rip. The Traspec Pro laces here are everything a goalie needs, and it's why guys like Cali Klang, SHL goalie, Anaheim Ducks prospect uses them. Aiden Spooner in the OHL. Dylan Kelly, who just got called up on an AHL call from the East Coast. That's amazing. Congrats to him. And these toe ties are also built for guys that are taller, guys with bigger feet. I feel most toe ties are built for kids that are, you know, five foot two, five foot three. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's nothing for the big guys out there. I wanted a toe tie that rotates and moves with me, gives me slack to reduce stress on my joints, but not feel sloppy, and have enough length for my huge, massive feet. Now, we did that with the Traspec, so if you're tired of your current toe ties, maybe your knees and your hips are killing you from all this RVH post work, or maybe your toe ties keep ripping, you can use the link in the description, pick up a set of Traspec laces. They work on any set of pads. New Vaughn pads, you're gonna need a new toe bridge that you can see here on the video screen. Warrior pads can be done as well. And as always, that Traspec code is gonna get you five bucks off. They come with a money back guarantee. You're gonna love the Traspec Pro laces. Now we're running kind of short on time here. So hack number eight is gonna be quick. This is a style hack. How to rock a toque when you go outdoors. My biggest idol growing up was Jose Theodore, and he changed the game when he wore a toque in the outdoor game against Edmonton. Now, this not only adds style, but it actually keeps you warm because it covers up the holes on the top of your helmet, allowing cold air to flow in and out. But now I literally take hockey tape, white, black, clear, doesn't matter, and I double it back around and put it on the corners of my helmet on top to create a square. I then sit the toque on top, and boom. Now you have a stylish look and you're going to be warm the next time you play outdoors. Now, my ninth hack is filming yourself. Now, I'm not saying be a crazy dad that films every save your son makes, post a highlight reel on YouTube and post it to every Facebook forum trying to get your kid recruited. I'm saying use film as a way to review your mistakes. In the moment, it's tough to get a full picture of what's going on because you're in it. You're busy filming things and looking at it with a fresh eye. You can make some serious improvements. I know I have ever since I started filming myself. Now, how do I do it? I used Insta360 1R. I've been using this with a puck mount. I basically melt two pucks together and simple as that. Obviously, it would be ideal to put the camera on the ice for a head-on view, but I like putting it on the boards like this. Surprisingly, it doesn't get hit in this position, like almost at all. This is what that view looks like. Maybe you want to put it on the ice. Okay, this is what that looks like. Maybe you want to do a net cam view. You want to get an understanding of your crease steps, what your skin looks like. This is what that looks like as well. The most convenient angle I found is putting it on the bench like this. If you can film it in 4K 60 frames or 5K 30 frames, zoom it in, and then you get an angle something like this. It won't get hit obviously in the bench. I personally use the one inch version of this camera. It's a little bit expensive. If you want a beginner camera, you can get the 4K edition of the 1R or the GoTo. Again, that's even cheaper altogether. And uh, there are links down below in the description if you want to learn more or pick up those cameras. So that is my 10 goalie hacks. I think every goalie should know. Hopefully it helps you. What did you think? Will any of this actually help you? Or do you have a hack that you think I should know? Leave it in the comment section below. If you got a question or you're curious, you can always hit me up on Instagram or TikTok at Traffic Waters right here. Send me a message. I'm always happy to help you. I want to say thank you very much for watching. And hopefully I'll see you again soon for the next video.